Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder and today I'm gonna to show you how I smoke my absolute favorite barbecue item, beef short ribs. Now the first thing you have to do when you're cooking beef short ribs is get beef short ribs, which is easier said than done, you might wanna know. Now these, as you can see, are big, huge, thick, meaty ribs. If you go to most grocery stores and get beef ribs, they look nothing like this. They look, in comparison, like the bony fingers of an old woman, right? These are very beefy, no pun intended. So, what you need is beef short ribs. Make sure you get that, because if you get those little ribs that have hardly any meat on them, it's gonna be, to me, it's almost a waste. I've made them before, and I wouldn't go out of my way to eat them. Like, if somebody gave them to me for free, I'd probably not even eat them. These, I absolutely love. It's like you take all the good things in barbecue and condense it down into one food item and it's this right here. So, after you get your rib, then you have to get to trimming it. As you guys can see here, we got a little bit of fat on the top. We got some marbling right here, but I don't care so much about the fat because that's gonna render really well, especially how we're gonna cook these. I'll show you that in a minute. But I wanna get all this silver skin off right and because it's going to be tough and it's going to be less than enjoyable so what i do usually is i'll get in here with one of these trimming knives and it's hard to do the whole chunk of silver skin at once so you just slide the knife in and what i like to do is just kind of work it to the other side and the goal is not to take off too much meat because this is expensive stuff in relative terms and you don't want to um, waste your money by destroying the meat that you just got so I start like maybe in the middle and then work my way back. Um, I found that this is the easiest way for me to um, actually do this trimming because if you try to go through um, and lift the silver skin and just cut underneath it, I think that a lot of times you end up taking off too much meat. So let's get the rest of the silver skin off. All right, so this should be about what your beef rib looks like when you're done trimming it. Now, I wouldn't worry a whole bunch about getting every little speck of silver skin off, but if you get that huge chunk off and any big pieces that you see, it should work fine. Now, you can see from these trimmings that we didn't actually lose very much of this beef rib at all. So we get off that silver skin and the rest is gonna go into the cooker. Now, after you've got your short rib trimmed, it's time to season it. And I always season with salt separately because that way I have complete control of the salt. It's something I preach in almost every video I do. So I season it similar to how I season briskets. And so I'm just gonna take some salt and sprinkle it on top. So you can use a relatively heavy amount of salt, but you don't wanna go crazy. Like to me, that's just about perfect. Now, one thing you don't wanna forget is to get the edges. So make sure you get the edges with a little bit of salt because the edges, and the top are where you're going to build that bark, where you're going to build that flavor, and you want to make sure that it's well seasoned. Okay, so the salt's on, and you can let this sit for a while. Um, I'm kind of in a rush today, so I'm not going to let it sit as long as I would normally want to, maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. But I'm going to take my beef rub, and sprinkle liberally over the top here. Now to me, this is a perfectly seasoned beef rib ready to go on the smoker. One note guys, notice I didn't season the back of this short rib. Now in my experience, seasoning the back doesn't do any good. Uh, I don't think anything really penetrates through there, um, at least not in a discernible way to me. And then also a lot of times all the seasoning just kind of falls off after cooking there because this membrane gets dried out and um, you, you lose the seasoning and there's no point in putting it on there. Another note is, make sure you leave the membrane on because if you don't leave the membrane on, what can happen is 
this rib, this plate of ribs here, will completely fall apart. So the membrane actually holds it together, so you wanna keep it on there, because there's plenty of meat on the top, and you wanna keep it nice and together as one solid piece. So leave the membrane on, don't worry about seasoning it. Now, when you're selecting what kind of rub you like, you can use any kind you want, but what I would caution you against is using a rub that's got a lot of sugar in it, or really even any sugar in it. I wouldn't put any sugar in your rub if you make your own, or if you don't make your own, I would go with something that's got very little or no sugar in it that you might buy off the shelf. Here's why. We're gonna cook these unwrapped for almost the entire cooking process. And what can happen is, especially one thing I noticed with beef ribs, is that the outside takes a lot of punishment because it's gonna create a great bark, but if you have sugar in there, it can actually burn. And that ruins all the goodness of the short rib. So. Use whatever kind of seasoning you want, but be careful and be mindful of how much sugar is in that rub. All right, now that this is seasoned and it's had about 15 minutes to rest, some of the juices are coming out, and so now this seasoning is sticking on pretty well, it's time to throw it on the smoker at 275. Now, as you guys can see, I have not just one set of beef ribs in here, but four because full disclosure, I'm doing two videos at once. And so you can check them both out. The video that we're doing in addition to the how-to here is we're doing a comparison of Wagyu, Prime, and then that Choice short rib. So we're gonna be cooking them all at the same time. And if you're interested in how those turn out, go check out that video. Right now, when you're cooking these beef ribs, there are two things you gotta keep in mind, okay? Number one is clean smoke. If you look up here at the smokestack, what do you see? Not a bunch of gross smoke. And the reason for that is you're cooking these things unwrapped for a long time, so the quality of the smoke is really gonna show up in the final flavor. So if you have clean smoke, you're gonna get delicious, smoky goodness. If you have dirty, gross smoke, you're gonna get some bitter, gross, make you feel sick type of smoke. You don't want that. Now the second thing you gotta think about when you're cooking beef ribs is, it's one word, bark. Okay, beef ribs are all about the bark that you create on the exterior surface of the meat, even more so to me than brisket. Brisket bark is delicious and wonderful, but for me, the joy of eating a beef rib is that bark where all that flavor accumulates on the outside of the meat, and then you have perfect, moist, succulent meat underneath. But those are the two things you're thinking about during the cooking process. Now, toward the end, we're gonna think about tenderness and some stuff like that, but right now, we're thinking bark, 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 bark. So. Clean smoke is gonna create delicious bark and you wanna cook hot enough so that bark forms really well. And so we're cooking at 275. I always start at a lower temperature than I finish. And the reason behind this for me, I don't know if I have any scientific validation for this, but my theory about it is when you start cooking at a lower temperature, you heat up the inside of the meat and you start to uh, liquefy some of that fat and that protects the meat because some of that fat kind of oozes to the outside surface and keeps it from um, crusting over too much. It kind of keeps everything uh, wet and uh, you don't burn anything on the outside. So I start relatively low, uh, about 275, and then I end up finishing them off usually closer to 300. Um, but it can go 275 the whole way through. But we'll keep you updated as we go. It's 275 right now. And my plan is to leave it there for about three hours before we start to open it up and, and spray. All right, we're five and a half hours in, and we're gonna take a look at these ribs in here and see what they look like. As you can see, they're starting to get good color on there, starting to bark up a little bit. Let's grab this choice rib from the back and take a look at it. All right, so this is what we're working with here. Now, I've had this end toward the fire the whole time, and you can see it's getting darker than this side. So what we're gonna do at this point in order to keep the bark as uniform as possible and to get tenderness as even as possible, is we're actually gonna flip it around. We're gonna flip it around, whoop, just like that. And so it'll have equal amounts of pullback on both sides of the bone, so you don't have it all just over to one side. We're gonna do that. And there's not enough bark here yet for me to start spraying it. I want it to bark up just a little bit more, maybe another 45 minutes or so before I actually start spraying. And I'm gonna use 50% water, 50% apple cider vinegar. Because you want the best possible bark you can. The priority is bark, bark, bark. So, we wanna get delicious smoky bark. 
I'm gonna put this back and let it keep going. The temperature in here right now is about 170. Okay, let's give this a try and see what it looks like. About 174, so we're on our way. Maybe a couple more hours and we'll get there. Now a couple of tips if you're smoking beef ribs. Number one, if you have two racks in your smoker where you have like a top and a bottom where one's significantly hotter than the other, I would put the beef ribs on the lower rack. Well, the idea is you want the heat to hit the meat on top rather than coming up and hitting the bones below because the bones can kind of serve to protect the meat if you're cooking real hot, but they get so much hotter than the meat that a lot of times the bottom of the rib can overcook before the top gets tender enough. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't want the bottom to get overcooked. So however you have to arrange that on your smoker, so however you have to arrange that on your smoker is the way you need to do it so that you get the perfect final product. Now, in terms of spraying, you don't want to spray so much that you um, spray all the seasoning off. So what I wanna do in getting that crust around the outside without spraying it first is just get the most flavorful bark I can possibly get. And we'll tenderize it later, I'll show you that. But you want it to be nice and moist from the fat that's coming up from the meat so that you don't have to spray it. Um, if you spray it, you can spray off seasoning, you can lose some of that flavor you've worked so hard to achieve by burning a clean fire with clean smoke. So the combination of fat, salt, the seasonings you use, and smoke are gonna produce that bark on the outside that's gonna make everybody say, wow. My friend Joel's messing up my shot by flying his plane out of here. <laughs> I was thinking about that today, actually. What? Um, like Joel flying out during a video. <laughs> now the last step in our process, and I wanna do this while we still have daylight because we're gonna have to wrap this up when it's dark, but the last step in the process uh, of cooking these beef ribs is we're gonna actually wrap them in butcher paper. And the reason why isn't so much to speed the process, but I'm just gonna do it for like the last 10 degrees. So from about 190 to 200, I'll have them wrapped in butcher paper because that crust that forms on the outside, I wanna soften it up just a little bit. I don't want it to turn mushy or anything like that, but I wanna soften that bark so it's bite through and you get all that good flavor and you don't have to deal with any bits that are too crunchy. And so you get the perfect marriage of great bark and softness when you bite into the succulent beef rib. So we'll show you how to do that in a minute. But one thing I would encourage you not to do is don't wrap in foil, number one. And number two, don't wrap too early. A lot of times people will get to the point where they're at 165, 170, and they're like, oh, I'm in the stall, I need to wrap with foil. Don't do that. You're gonna ruin the bark that's so delicious. So wrap for only about the last 10 degrees. I've tried a bunch of different stuff with cooking beef ribs and cooking a lot of barbecue items for that matter. But with beef ribs, I've discovered that wrapping them just for the last bit, just to soften up that outside, is the perfect way to do it. Geez, it's really green after all the rain. It's weird. It's always brown. <laughs> All right, so it's been six and a half hours now and we're ready to start spraying. So if we open this up, let's take a look here. Let me actually pull out my phone and shine some light on there. All right, now you can see that guy in the back is nice and dark. So now we don't want the bark to get too crusty. So we're gonna hit it with some spray, with that with some spray. And let him keep going. The internal temperature right now is about 184 degrees. So we're getting close. So I just wanna keep everything nice and moist because the bark has really started to form now and I just don't want it to get too tough. So this is looking really good right where I want it. Our brisket, it, oh geez, not brisket. <laughs> Okay, ready? <laughs> now it's time to wrap our short ribs. So they've reached just over 190, 191 internal. We're gonna go for about 200. And now the bark has really started to stiffen up on the outside. And so what we wanna do to make sure that that doesn't get too hard 
is we're gonna wrap it. Now, another reason I didn't mention earlier why we wait so long to wrap it is if you wrap too early, the membrane on the bottom can actually um, rehydrate and break. So it's kind of getting dehydrated right now during the cooking process. And if you wrap it, it holds all that moisture in and then it softens up the membrane and then a lot of times the, the meat will actually break free from the bone itself, which you don't want to happen. Now, invariably this happens sometimes, even if you wait super late to wrap. Even if you don't wrap, sometimes it can still happen. But it's a huge problem if you wrap really early. So now it's time to wrap and so I'm gonna grab the ribs out and we're gonna wrap them in some butcher paper. Now the butcher paper we're gonna use is different than the butcher paper I use for briskets. I use the 18 inch butcher paper right here for briskets and that's not quite wide enough to be able to wrap uh, beef ribs in comfortably um, without using a double layer. And if you use a double layer, it's way too much. So we're gonna use the 12 inch butcher paper right here and use two sheets and uh, we'll lay those down and wrap them up. Feeling pretty good. One tip for wrapping in butcher paper is if you fold this last part in, it's easier to pick up whatever the item is. All right, so we're just gonna leave those in there to finish cooking. Um, we're gonna look for 200 is the final temperature roundabout. But what we wanna do is probe and when it feels like you know softened butter, in there, then we know that they're done. So the temperature tells us we're in the ballpark, but the feel of the probe going into the meat tells us, okay, we're done. The ribs have reached 200 degrees or close enough, 199.2. When I probed them, they felt like butter, so I knew it's time to take them off. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them and put them in a cooler to rest. And I'm gonna use the styrofoam cooler because if it fills with grease, I can just throw this away and I don't have to worry about cleaning it and getting it gross. And I don't like to use towels because they get soaked in grease too and I don't wanna deal with that. So styrofoam coolers are my favorite way to do this. So it's time to get them off. So if you probe the side, yeah, it feels just like butter. Feels real nice. We're gonna take it, rest it in the cooler. All right, so we pulled these off and let them rest for about 30 minutes in the cooler. And so let's unwrap them and see what we're working with here. Okay, so we said early on in the video that we're all about bark, bark, bark. We want flavorful bark. So we got flavorful bark all over this and um, none of it's too crusty and it's not gonna be crunchy or too hard to eat, but it should be packed with flavor. So let's cut one of these guys off. And so what I like to do is I like to go to the back side. And one of the reasons we wrapped late is so that this membrane stays intact so they don't fall apart um, and the meat separates from the bones, which is less appealing than a huge chunk of meat sticking on top of the bones. So let's cut one of these off. Let's hit the second membrane. And that is a perfectly smoked beef rib. Now the last step to any barbecue process is tasting. So let me cut off a chunk here and give it a try. Packed with flavor, all in the bark. Nice, tender, juicy, all that intramuscular marbling makes it just super rich, um, but uh, just just bursting with juice. So you get everything you like in barbecue all in one bite. Get beef short ribs, smoke them with a real wood fire, and you're gonna be glad that you did. All 
All right. Thank you for watching Mad Scientist Barbecue. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. You can subscribe to the channel or follow me on Instagram for more barbecue information.